it is my first visit to Urbino, but I knew about Urbino when I was a, a young child and I was reading books about the histories, histories of uh, medieval Italy and the Duke of Montefieltro. I think I knew the city before being here. Uh, and it's not easy to come to Urbino because the communications are not, uh, not uh, easy. Uh, but it's a great pleasure to be in a city that has been keeping its character, its uh, geography, its urban physiognomy exactly as it was uh, 500, 600 years ago. Because I think that there are, they represent two different historical moments. And you imagine the Monstrous, ancient Greek, and Hamilton, American independence. They are very far away geographically and in the, for, for centuries and centuries, no? But I think both represent some of the challenges that the Europeans are facing today. Hamilton created the federal treasury of the U.S. by pulling together the different debts of the different confederated states. And by creating common debt, and by creating common taxes in order to pay back the debt, he created a strong link, and then they went from a confederation to a federation. It was a state building, and it was a success story. The most of the country was not a success story. It was someone who was warning their fellow citizens that it was a danger, that it was a big power, Sparta, who was very pushy, who was creating a strong army, who was representing a threat, an existential threat from them, and they had to react. But the people from Athens considered that it was not a problem. They did nothing, and then they lose the war against Sparta, the Mostanes, they committed suicide, and this represents a big failure, a success story and a failure, because people were able to give a, an answer in one case, and they were not able to give an answer in the other case. And I think that both cases represent a good historical reference for the Europeans to know how to deal with the challenges of today. Not enough. And I think in Europe we have been able to overcome the antagonism between different identities. Today nobody, thanks God, believes that they could have to be fighting against uh, their old friends from one side or the other. No? The European young people today, they have eradicated war and that's a very good news. But we haven't created yet a common identity. If you go to China and people ask you, where are you coming from? You would not say from Europe. You will not say from Urbino, you will say from Italy. The same thing happens to me. I'm a Spanish, you are Italian, the Germans, the French, we are still not being Europeans. American people, they don't say I'm coming from Nevada, I'm coming from Florida, they say I'm coming from the US. Because they built a common identity. And this is something that the future generation has to do. It will take time. And it doesn't mean that to create a European identity means to abolish, to vanish our national identities. We will have different identities. I am from Catalonia, I am Catalan, I am from Spain, I am Spanish, I am from Europe, I am European. The day that the Europeans will be able to recognize themselves as Europeans, sharing the same culture and sharing the same concerns, and understanding the world the way it is, not because having different political, historical and cultural roots, but because they have the same strategic thinking, looking at the future, not uh, looking at the past, then the European identity will be created. But for that, we need a lot of political pedagogy. We have to blame less Brussels, saying, oh, Brussels is doing, who is Brussels? Brussels is all of us together. And to make a political pedagogy means that for the European leaders to be able to, to create a common thinking. We don't have still a common thinking. The Union Europea is a group of states. The Union Europea is not a state. 
Allora, quando si parla di politica estera, quando si parla di difesa, abbiamo le politiche di tutti gli Stati membri, che qualvolta sono insieme e altre volte non sono insieme. Sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't agree. In the case of the war launched by Russia against Ukraine, there has been a strong unity on supporting Ukraine. Well, now, today, there are some differences, but we can say that overall we have been strongly united and put in resources in order to support Ukraine economically, militarily, from every point of view. We haven't been united in front of the war in Gaza. Some member states are stronger supporting Israel's right to defense, others consider that this right to defense has limits. Well, everybody understands that they have, it has limits, but this is theory. In practice, someone points to the limits and others don't do it. And this is what has made us not as much relevant as we could be. Because when we go to the United Nations and we vote at the General Assembly in different manners, one supporting, others abstaining, others voting against, there is not a voice of Europe. There is a voice of Europe for humanitarian support, for asking for a ceasefire, but not enough engaged on looking for a political solution, because we have a completely different approaches rooted in our history. Some member states have a, a feeling of uh, having to support Israel because the Holocaust, because what happened with the Jewish people during the Second World War, others feel more concerned by the fate of the Palestinians. In both cases, we have to work for the security of Israel, which has the right to exist, and we have to ensure that the Palestinians also have the right to exist and to support the process of building a Palestinian state, in which everybody agrees, once again in theory, but in practice, when it comes the moment of implementation, then you see that there are different levels of engagement.